My friends, I've done a little bit of uh, homestead archaeology here on the farm, and I think you'll find it interesting. Got some videos to show you on that, and I'll tell you all about that right after this. friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. It is Monday, October 24th already. Mentioned that I have been doing some homestead archaeology. You will recall quite a few episodes ago, and I think it was in a vlog, I found a long, real big star drill, huge big thing that you drove with a sledgehammer to drill holes in rock. I found that back where I suspect there may have been a house at one time. I found a shotgun shell that was solid brass. And I can't remember what else I found at that time. Oh, a piece of a plow, uh, a, you know, a large uh, horse-drawn plow. I, I found the part with the name on it. Anyway, the point being that uh, I know there was an old home place back on this farm about, about halfway back. I, I have been looking for years, really, for maps that would show the homestead places, like plat maps. And I couldn't find one. I just couldn't find one. Well, the other day, just searching, man, I was, they were popping up like crazy. I don't know if I just typed in a different word on my search or what, but I was finding them like crazy. But none of them showed a home place on it until I found one that was dated uh, right around 1900. I, it may have been 1900 even, or it might have been 1901. I don't remember now, but it was an old map. And I thought, well, boy, if any of them are going to show an old home place on it, that 1900 map should be the one. And sure enough, it did. It showed exactly where I thought there would have been a house. There was a house back there. So then I got to thinking how they would have uh, survived back there because it's, it's in the middle of nowhere. So where would they get water? There's two, what I call wet weather springs in the middle of the field, real close to where the house was. And the reason I know they're there is because they laid these gigantic rocks, big flat rocks across the holes where the water comes and the water runs under those rocks. Then it runs into a pipe and it runs all the way over to the creek. Anyway, I started uh, metal detecting around those springs and, uh, you know, and back up toward where the house would be too. So I found a lot of stuff. So I thought I'd show you. Friends, we are on a archeological dig. You can see where I'm digging there. I have my phone behind my ranger here to try to block off some of the wind noise because it's really windy out here today. That hole that you see right in here, there used to be a spring there. Well, actually, there still is a spring there. It's just that it's kind of a wet weather spring these days. Now, back in the 1800s, it may have ran more often. I have evidence now, and I found it on a 1900 map. There was just a little dot on the map, and they put those dots wherever houses were. So there used to be a house up in here or over there in the woods. And I actually suspect in the woods, uh, right on the edge of the woods there. And the reason I suspect that is because I'll show you that in a minute. There's some rocks that are all hand laid up. To give you your bearings on my farm, the shop is back that way just a little over a half mile. Um, because my property is one mile long and we're just past the halfway point. The halfway point, in fact, is right up there in the woods, uh, about, oh, 75 yards into the woods there is the halfway point. So we're a little past halfway. Uh, by the way, just so you know, that dirt you can see there is the dirt I was digging out to put in my creek project here and clean up the creek. You can see how I've got it all, all the brush and stuff cleaned up along the creek. It's looking really good now. I've always known this well was here, but I thought, you know, it'd be neat to metal detect around that because an old well from the 1800s for sure, or this, I'm calling it a well, I really mean spring, but an old spring from the 1800s would uh, definitely have stuff around it. And sure enough, I found quite a bit of stuff. You can see a lot of the metal stuff that I found here. Just lots and bits and pieces of metal. But look at this. This is the cool stuff. Now you think this is nothing, but it really is pretty cool. Tells the story of this place. This is an old porcelain dish, and it's very old. You can tell just by the patina and by the way it's all cracked that this is very old. I, I'd almost guarantee you that this plate is from the 1800s. Found it, of course, in this hole. My guess is that back, you got to remember, this is pre-Walmart. 
<laughs> this was a long time ago. You, you can re imagine someone up there, you know, eating their dinner and then coming down here to the spring to wash their dishes. I'm not saying they did that all the time because more than likely they would tote a bucket of water up to the house. But, you know, I can imagine that somebody would walk down here and wash their plate in this spring. And, you know, on these rocks, and there's big rocks in there, by the way, on these rocks, you can imagine somebody could accidentally break their plate, you know, and leave, where are you, what are you going to do with it if you break it? You're just going to leave it lay. It's not going to hurt anything. It's not going to hurt the spring. And, and their mentality back then was, you don't clean up stuff, you just leave it lay, you know, and that's just kind of the way it was. And I'm not, I'm not picking on them. I'm not being negative. It's just the way life was back then. So let me come up closer to the spring here. Maybe, I'm hoping the wind doesn't just kill us. It's pretty windy. But if you, getting down in here, you can see the pipe. Now this old clay tile is very old too, but this clay tile might have been put in in the 40s or something like that. And they ran that out all the way out to the creek. You know, it's not running right now, or at least I don't hear any water moving through here right now. And like I said, it, at certain times of the year, in the spring especially, it just runs like crazy. I mean, it really runs hard and fast, and it runs for many, many days. In fact, it'll run for a month or two. But right now, in this dry time of the year, it's not running. And you can see these big rocks. You can't see them very well because they're covered in grass, but these are giant rocks that have been laid up over this. Let me try to clean it off there. That's just a big old rock. And there's more big rocks and there's lots of them. So I'm just doing an investigation around this, hoping to find clues to what went on back in the 1800s on the farm here. Now we'll go over and I'll show you why I think the house may have been over here. We haven't made it to the woods yet. Here is another spot that I am positive is some sort of a spring. There's a giant rock there laid across this hole so I'm going to dig this out and, and, and metal detect around this also. I just And that's only a short distance from the other one there. So I'm sure this is also a water source, or it was at one time. Okay, so let's just go on over to the woods. Okay, this is the area where I think the house may have been. Now the problem with finding anything remain of the house, or uh, is that they bulldozed this whole property back in the 40s. They, that berm that you can see there, it's just kind of a bank. That berm goes for a half a mile that way. And it's an erosion thing to keep the fields from eroding. And, but they just did a lot of damage to the property when they did that. And this is the area where I think the house may have been. And let me show you some of the evidence. Let's just go over here first. See all these rock laid up? You can tell that's not natural. That was hand laid rock. It goes all, pretty much all the way along this bank here. And it's been covered up with dirt and stuff. But then you can see more evidence of it over here. Um, where it's been laid up right in here, I believe. And it's all covered in leaves and stuff too. You can't see it very well. But that whole bank right there, having rock laid along it like that, a lot of times they would build their house up above. And so the house could have been up there in those where the trees are now. Back in the 1800s, those trees wouldn't have existed because they're all small trees for the most part. I don't think there's very many trees that I see that could have been around in the 1800s. Maybe one or two of these bigger ones might have been a tiny sapling, like that one there, perhaps. But, you know, it's really hard to say. This is the area where I have found, well, in fact, this whole area is just covered with metal. I mean, it's just covered with metal. Any place you swing the detector, you'll hear a beep. This is the place where I found a, uh, a piece of an old plow. I found that big star drill that I showed in an earlier video. And I also found the solid brass uh, shotgun shell. In other words, the, the casing and everything was brass which you don't see anymore. Those were made in the 1800s also. So 
I know there was a lot of activity right in here and this is where I suspect the house would have been and if you look back over there there's the ranger and that's close to where the well is or the spring I should say again so I don't know I'm just supposing there was a lot of activity right in this general area no better than to do this because the wind is going to be crazy loud but look at the signals I'm getting down in this hole now I honestly the 18 signal if it was solid I would be suspecting a gold coin but because it's not solid because it's bouncing around my guess is that it's probably just more old rusty iron big heavy iron down there so we got to get down in there and find out what this is I don't know yet but I'm sure there's something down there this thing don't lie that's one thing you can know for sure if it says there's metal there there is metal there well I got to be quite honest my biggest fear about digging down in this deep hole is copperheads I mean they could be anywhere back in here and uh, I've already had encounters with four copperheads this fall <laughs> and most of them have been right back here in this field as I was digging the pond which is just that way about a few hundred yards a couple hundred yards so uh, you know it's got me thinking it's still warm enough they could still be around so I'm watching okay we're down to the brass tacks here as far as locating it goes this is a pin pointer and you can hear it beeping so the metal is right in here somewhere right at the end of that pin pointer there somewhere there's metal now again I suspect it's a piece of iron I really do I don't think it's anything important I'll be really pleasantly surprised if it is something better than a piece of iron but that's what I think and you can hear that that for sure tells me we're close so let's get in here and scrape it out and see what we find i'm pretty positive it'll be iron because of the way the signal was bouncing around well it's such a lot harder to dig than it looks it's uh, very rocky and gravelly and uh, the sand is packed hard yeah, well, I might have already, it may have been something small, and I may have already thrown it out of the way. I have to get back in here and check it again, and get that rock out. <clears throat> Trying to keep my hands out of there as much as possible. Because of the snake potential. And I sure don't see anything. Let's see if we can hear anything on the pinpointer now. Uh-oh, I moved, probably moved it. So, so I've moved it, whatever it is, it's probably right here. Let's see if I can get it in my hand. Yeah, I don't really have a good way to hold the camera, but it is in my hand here. I can tell by the pin pointer. You can hear it. Sorry, I can't do a better job. All right, I'll sh Well, it is some sort of a little ring. I don't know if it's a person ring, a ring for a finger. If it is, it's not a precious metal. It's, uh, I don't know what it is. I'll have to see if we can clean it up and figure it out, but... It's shaped like it would be a regular person's ring. Yeah, I can't imagine. Pretty cool, though. So we'll clean that up and show you that later. Right at the spring, I found this first. Now, again, this isn't anything impressive to most people. But it's a piece of old china. Porcelain, I guess you'd call it. <clears throat> I call it China because it's it was a plate. I'm pretty positive it was a plate. And then I found another small piece, just another little tiny piece. And these were right in the spring area there in the middle of the field. So here's what I imagine. You know, back then, you got to remember this was a long time ago. People probably brought their 
dishes occasional. I'm not saying they did it every time, but occasionally they may have brought a dish or two down to the spring to wash them off. And this may have gotten broke in the process and just left lay there. That's what I'm supposing. I found lots of other just miscellaneous metal artifacts there, but then I wanted to show you this, and you'll see it in the video too, that I found this, what I think is a ring. And it's, it's not a precious metal ring. It's, um, you know, it's not silver, it's not gold. And you might say, well then how come it didn't completely tarnish and just dissolve away being so small? Well, I think it's probably made out of this nickel silver, which is what I found up near our old, our present old house. That, that old house up here on the hill was built back in the 1800s also. And uh, this is one of their tablewares, and this is called nickel silver. And you can see how it is tarnished here. It's kind of, you know, uh, kind of rusty looking. Nickel silver contains no silver. It's, uh, I, it's an alloy and I believe it's tin and maybe either copper or bronze or something like that and um, nickel I think. Something like that. You can look it up because there's all kinds of information out there on nickel silver. And I kind of think maybe this ring was probably nickel silver also. In fact, I'm going to look this up a little bit more and I'm going to, I'm going to get out the microscope and look at this really close because you know, without my close-up glasses on, it almost looked like there could be some writing in there. It, it, I'm almost sure this is a ring. It could be something else. It could be, be a band off of something else, you know, for all I know. But, it, but I kind of think it's a ring because it looks just like it's about the right size to be a ring, etc. Then I found all kinds of other miscellaneous stuff. Uh, brass rings. This is an old brass lock from back in the 1800s. Uh, here's the coolest thing, and yet it's the dumbest thing. I mean, it's like it's nothing at all, but it's cool to me because I know what it takes to do something like this. See this? This is a file. But you notice the bend? The bend goes this way. Now, I could see it bent this way. It wouldn't be very hard, although bending a file usually breaks. It doesn't usually bend. And so they obviously heated this up, bent this for a purpose, and it eventually broke right there. You can see it's broke. It's not, that wasn't cut. That's kind of a break. And you can also tell they physically bent it because it's warped right here, just exactly like you would get uh, if you bent something on the flat. I, and trust me, I know about that because I've done stuff like that a lot in my shop, my metal shop. So I know this would warp and bend like this is warped and bent. It's exactly like it would have happened back in the old days. So they probably put this in an old forge or something, heated it up red hot and bent it. Now why they did it, I have no idea. Can't imagine why they did that. But it's a very old uh, double cut rasp. If you can see the pattern in it, it's a double cut. In other words, it's not, in other words, the lines don't just go one direction, they go one direction and then they come across at another 45 from that on both sides. Then I found this old thing and you think, well, what in the world would that be and who, who would care anything about that? Well, this is an old trailer pin um, or, well, I say trailer. Back then, it probably wasn't a trailer. It could have been a wagon, but it probably was just some farm implement and they just dropped this pin down in there. It's probably some horse drawn implement and they just dropped this pin in there to keep the, the harness from the horse connected to the implement. And the reason I know that's what this was for is because you can see the wear mark right here. Can you see how it's worn right here? And that's, that's probably where it, the tension was going on it uh, from the horse pulling it. And they used it a lot because it wore quite a bit. So, you know, I'm 99% sure this was a, a, a pin to connect a horse to something. Um, you know, ask me how I know I grew up that way. I, you know, I know about that kind of stuff. And then lastly, here's the only other interesting thing I found, and it's not very interesting. Uh, this is not, uh, you know, any kind of precious metal. This is just iron, but the shape of it tells me that I think it was some sort of a towel rack. Um, I don't know that for sure, but it's shaped like the old, uh, 
antique towel racks would have been in a kitchen or something where you put two screws in it and there's a rod going to the other one and uh, you know you, you put it either between cabinets or something like that um, you know it just reminds me of that and that's what I think it is but I'm not a hundred percent sure So it could have been something else, but that's exactly what it looks like. And some of you old timers that have seen those old towel racks that I'm talking about, you'll know what I'm talking about there. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at uh, what I do uh, in my spare time, <laughs> like I have any. <laughs> Sometimes I just make time to do stuff that I like to do. I, you know, you might say, well, why do you spend your time, you know, looking for this stuff? And it really, it's worthless. All of it's worthless. It, for me, history is important, and it's neat to know the history of this old farm and to understand who came before, uh, just like finding the Native American artifacts. They came way before, and uh, now I know a whole lot about them, and I'm trying to learn more about those people that lived here back in the 1800s. So, hope you enjoyed it. If I find anything else that's interesting, I'll be sure to show it to you down the road. Thank you so much for watching. Thank <laughs> you.